coming up on today's show. You get around the wrong crowd and then you start to fall into the things that they're doing. And that kind of just exposing us to being around gun violence. We were robbing people, we were jumping people. People just started getting killed that was around me, um, whether it was by suicide or homicide. It didn't really put, you know, give me that thought, okay, I need to get out of this. It just starts, okay, we're gonna get revenge. Welcome to Our Grace Family. Thank you for joining us. I'm Reverend Steve Millar, a minister at Grace Cathedral. And this is my lovely wife, Kathy. We have a member from Grace Cathedral joining us, and he's going to share how he learned about God at Grace Cathedral and how God changed his life. Welcome to the program, Reno. We are so excited to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. And you're relatively new in the Lord, so you've been serving the Lord for about a year now. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And we want to know what life was like before you came to Christ. So growing up, I kind of had a rough childhood, I should say, um, not having that leadership in a home growing up as a kid. Um, I started to get around with the wrong crowd. So of course, you know, you get, around, you get around the wrong crowd and then you start to fall into the things that they're doing. You kind of want to just fit in and just be led by them. So um, growing up, I didn't really have a background with knowing God. Um, I attended church one time as a small child, but I don't really remember that experience. So um, I didn't really know what I was looking for growing up other than just trying to fit in and just be with the people I was around. So you were kind of in survival mode as yeah. a child. Yeah, just kind of survival mode. Um, a lot of the people I were around growing up, um, my old friends, they were involved with a lot of worldly stuff and a lot of bad stuff. And unfortunately, growing up, that lead to a lot of my friends dying. Can you give me some examples of what they were involved in? Um, we grew up kind of wanting to party. Um, I got involved with that stuff around 14 years old. So you're very young. Yeah, I was very young getting around that stuff, partying, being in places I shouldn't have been. And that kind of just exposing us to being around gun violence and just around violence in general. Um, we got into a lot of fights. Um, we were robbing people. We were jumping people. And then, you know, people just started getting killed that was around me, um, whether it was by suicide or homicide. Wow, so it was a very violent yeah. environment for you. Yeah. And where were your parents during this time? Um, my mother was in and out of the house. She wasn't really too involved once I got to that teenage stage. Um, the person that raised me was my grandfather, but he wasn't my blood, but he still raised me and my brother. So we kind of just had that freedom, you know, hey, if you want to, go be with your friends, you just go ahead. Um, there was no like structure in the house. Mm. So that led to you going out and doing whatever you wanted to do, yeah. whenever you wanted to do it. Yeah. And I think structure is very important in a home yeah. for children to be raised, to know the difference between right and wrong. Yes. And, it, and it's sad, but nowadays it seems like this is, seems to be the trend oh, with, yeah. with, with families where it's either a broken home or mm -hmm. the grandparents are raising the children. Yeah. And it's it's really showing up on the younger generation. Well, yeah, um, they don't have that leadership and um, it just leads to this younger generation growing up. If they're growing up in a broken home, they don't know what they're looking for, right? So they start looking in other places where they shouldn't be looking. And that's just kind of what I had my hand in, just looking in the wrong place. So when you were losing people that were close to you through violence, was that affecting you? Like, were you thinking in your mind, I need to get out of this type of lifestyle? Or what were you thinking during that time? So the devil had a hold of me at that time. And the reason why I say that is because first it started with suicides and then it led to homicides. And it didn't really put, you know, give me that thought, okay, I need to get out of this. It just starts, okay, we're going to get revenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were going deeper. Yeah, we, it led to us going deeper and then just getting more involved with alcohol, my friends were. I wasn't too involved with that, but then alcohol, when they get involved with alcohol, it leads to more and more violence. And then me being with them, it's like, okay, if you guys are gonna go do this, I'm just gonna go with you. Did you ever go to prison, jail or anything? Um, I got locked up one time and that was for, it was just for theft. And the people I was with were still in the malls. And once again, just being with people, 
it has an influence over you. Right. So I'm okay, they're doing it. And then we were doing it for some time, so we eventually got caught. And that experience still didn't... No, it still didn't change me. Didn't change you at all? No. So it was so, going to take a higher power. Yeah. And that's probably with the same thing with other children, that, I mean, kids today, you know, where they, they keep on doing the same thing over and over, and they're, for whatever reason, they don't get scared about it. They're, they're numb to their situation. Yeah. It, it doesn't make, it doesn't take an effect on, like, without God, there's really nothing to kind of take charge over your life. And getting caught stealing, I mean, we just went right back to stealing right after, and there was you just like You didn't really no, learn your lesson, learn, so to speak. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was no feelings involved. We kind of was just taken. So what happened next in your life? How did you get to receiving the Lord? So um, I previously was attending a, um, a church before I came to Grace Cathedral. And when I was going to that church... Um, How old were you during this time? Um, what, when going to the mm -hmm. church? 20, 23. So you're past your teens at this point. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. And when I was attending this church, the pastor had said something to me that kind of just threw me off. And I was new to like coming to God. So I was just kind of just trying to find God and see, you know, what God was about. So when I met with this guy, he told me he was a pastor and invited me to his church. So I started attending this church and I met with the head pastor after. And the head pastor told me, if you hear me cussing on a stand, it's because I cussed outside of church. I'm not going to fake for who I am. And I kind of left like a sour taste in my mouth. So he, so he said he's not going to fake who he is, mm -hmm. meaning that if he cusses outside, he's going to cuss inside. Correct. You know, and it, yeah. And so people need to realize that's not living for the Lord if you're cussing. Yeah. You know, just like Peter in the Bible. You know, he, he wanted to show that he denied Jesus by cussing. Yeah. You know? So, hey, I'm not one of the disciples. So in your case, what did you do next? So um, when, I, when I was going to that church, um, I would come home and I would see my wife watching the live streams. And it kind of just- Grace Cathedral. Yes, with Grace mm -hmm. Cathedral. Mm -hmm. And it just piqued my interest about, you know, hey, maybe I should try this one service. And I came about a year ago. And that first service when I came, I mean, that just changed everything dramatically for me. And just from, I've just been a member since. And <laughs> I, I don't plan on looking back, and this is just where God is. Well, what I find amazing about your story is here you were not raised in church. You really didn't know much about God. But when you started going to church, obviously you were, you were searching. Yes. And that experience with that pastor telling you that, you know, he curses, you knew within your heart, something's not right here. Yeah. This is not right. And you, you really didn't have any background to really understand that. But yes. the Holy Spirit, I believe, gave you that, that thought that something's not yes. right here. And your, your wife, she actually, um, her, her family attends Grace Cathedral. So she had that connection. Yes. And praise God that she was watching those live streams to influence you. But before you really got in there, uh, you had some other experiences yes, that the devil was really out to destroy you. Can you share that with us? Yes. Yeah, so um, I was just just looking for something. Um, before you um, before you find God, we're not sure exactly what we're looking for. So I started looking into crystals. Um, you know, it's a different faith, of course. And now I know it's idol worshiping, right? And Previously, um, how I had got involved with the crystals is that I had talked with a lady who claimed that she could see the dead. And what kind of piqued my interest with that is after one of my best friends killed herself, um, we'd grown up, he killed herself. She was so-called doing a reading and she said that she was able to see the dead. So she told us, she was telling me that she found him and the way the devil was using her, it made me believe even more because like, the information was just on point. And she was telling me that he looked at her and that my friend that was dead told her that he was sorry. You know, he didn't mean to do it, which was kill herself, commit suicide. And then she told me that he was wearing a football jersey, which we um, grew up playing football. And then she also was asking about his childhood because he was abused. So that just shows how the devil can mimic things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A familiar and, spirit. Yeah, a familiar spirit. And it lead me to believing into that. So that led to consequences later on down the road. 
Now, did you consider that a church or did you just consider that as like a psychic that you were going to? A, what it was? Like what? a psychic. Okay. And that's what got me involved with like the crystals. Oh, you know, if she's doing this, maybe the stuff with the crystals is real and I can have power from it. Right. Okay. So people who are, don't know, because I really don't know that much, crystals yeah. are just stones or yeah. rocks or in there, they're yeah. clear and how do they use them? So each one is supposed to have like its own power, I should say. And then some is supposed to be for good energy, some is supposed to be for luck. Yeah, which are, yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we believe in blessings, yes. you know, and, but yeah, these, these crystals are just, you know, kind of like false hope. It's false, it's us mm -hmm. idols. There's nothing real about them. Well, Reverend's book, Decida Lucifer, really goes into the mm -hmm. occult and all that mystic uh, type of uh, wares and so forth. And, and that's one thing that the devil loves to do is um, he likes to feed information through these people, bits of information, and some of it, some of it can be true yeah. to get you hooked. Yes. And then you start to believe that these powers are real and you start to put your faith in yes. it. And that's what the devil did with you. And you started reaching out for it more and more. So what did that lead to? So that led to, to me opening spirits into my home. And one, one night or one day I was in my room and I heard my son screaming in his room. He was three years old at the time. I heard him screaming. So he came running out of his room. I kind of met with him in the hallway. And he told me he had seen a scary face in his closet that had red eyes. You know, him being a child, I'm just like, okay, what could that be, right? So I go in this room, I don't see anything. I'm just looking around this room, nothing's there. So you didn't but think anything of it? I didn't think too much of it, no. Okay. And yeah, and then um, shortly after that, my mother had came to my house and we had little alphabet letters on our fridge and her and my son walked past the fridge and every last letter just went flying off of the fridge. So every you were last seeing letter. different manifestations yes. in the home. Yes, that's correct. And then um, somebody else that was in my home, they said that they had seen a black shadow um, like rise up like against the wall and it had wings and a person just started just crying in tears like terrified So like now I know like that really opened up spirits into coming into my home right. So these different things. I mean when people are crying and screaming in your house, you know Something has to be wrong. Here. Yes. Okay. And so you you realize that you open your house up when yes. you want to see that seer or, or Psychic correct. So I ended up contacting somebody that I know and he ended up bringing a pastor that he knew to my house to bless the house and pray over the house and I remember right after the pastor I came into the house to pray for the house My bathroom door just slammed shut nobody was in there and it was such a strong force that slammed the door shut so that let me know like, you know, there is a evil presence in this house. Yeah, and that's what people don't realize that when they get involved in you know cults that you open the door to those demonic spirits. Yes. And that's what happened with you. Well, we have to take a quick break here, but friend, there's more to come. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Psalm chapter 86, verse five. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Something grabbed me, and I was going from the wall to wall. And I, I couldn't feel it, but I knew something had a hold of me. Because it was strong, I mean strong. Your mind just couldn't wrap around something holding you and you can't see it. And then all of a sudden, I looked down, it was four fingers, just like somebody took a straight razor with four and crossed my chest. It had to be a devil, a, a devil present there to do that. The Devil is Real. The book, The Deceit of Lucifer, written by the Reverend Ernest Angley, will help you to recognize the devil's tactics that he seeks to keep hidden. This book will open your eyes to how he works and how he operates. Go to our webpage to order your copy today. We're back with Reno, and he was just sharing with us how there was evil manifestations in his house. And Reno, could you tell us what happened next when that minister came into your house? 
So when the minister came into my house, um, he came to pray over the house and bless the house and the bathroom door just slammed completely shut. So right there it made me completely aware of, you know, hey, there is something really going on inside of this house. Um, not too long after that, I did eventually move in into another house, but I never really realized what was leading up to those spirits being more involved with my life. Did you keep those crystals that you had that yeah. were in the house? Yes, I did, because I was completely unaware that, hey, this is playing a part in you yeah, know, you didn't know the style. connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you didn't, yeah, you didn't have that, didn't realize. So what happened? You moved in the other house and you had those crystals. Did yeah. anything happen or no, did you I get just, rid of them? I just kept them and I just kept them for a few years after that, honestly. And then um, actually I, I had another book that I really shouldn't have had. Um, that book was just kind of just teaching, you know, leading more towards that side, I should say. Because the book ended up mentioning, you know, what loving father would throw his children into hell. But it's not God throwing us in the hell, it's us being disobedient and sinning. But right. I was completely unaware of all of that. Right. When you're a child of God, you're not sinning. Yes, okay? correct. So if you're a child of God and you're living right for God and serving Him, you are going to heaven. Okay. Yes. The problem is if you're not living for God and you're not serving Him, you're going to hell. So you read that book and you're, were you just thinking that, okay, I'm still going to heaven, I can do whatever I want? Yeah, and that's, that's the way the devil deceives a lot of us, you know? And we we tend to believe no matter what you do, we're all going to go to heaven, mm -hmm. right? And it just leads to the thought, okay, hell is just an empty place, which is not true. So especially with this generation coming up, we, you know, this generation tend to think, okay, we could just do whatever we want. And no matter what happens, we're all going to be saved. We're all going to go to heaven. And that also leads to a lot of people um, committing suicide. Because yes. people commit suicide, they're looking for a way out. Okay, well, if I kill myself, then I'm just going to go to heaven and be happy. But that's not true. Right. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's sad, but people think that that, you know, basically they're being tormented by the devil and they want to commit suicide. And then all of a sudden they do that in they're in hell and they're being tormented more. Yes. So that's not the answer. Yes. So I know with your friend who committed suicide, you you were like really upset with all yeah. that. And it, and it is sad when you know someone who does kill themselves or they, or even, you know, you had to go through a lot with your with your friends that, that actually were killed. Yeah. You know, and, you know, but what I'm amazed with is you weren't ready to look towards God yet. No. You know, you just wanted revenge. Yeah. And that's really not the way to go. You and, and tell us your experience, you know, about receiving the Lord. So I finally ended up coming to the Lord um, about a year ago. And I remember saying a sinner's prayer. And that God, was at Grace Cathedral. That was at Grace Cathedral, correct. And God was just drawing me closer and closer and closer. And after getting saved, I eventually stopped hanging around all of them. Cut communication with them. I don't talk to any of them. And the sad thing is that I actually tried to invite, you know, some of them. But one thing that I had to realize is that a lot of people aren't accepting of that truth. And a lot of people will actually, you know, kind of judge you for that. Yeah. You know, you can't live free from sin. That's not true. And you, like, we just have to stand our ground. But coming to the Lord, he just took everything away from me. He took violence away from me. He took me being away from those friends that were going to hinder my life more. And he also took worldly music away from me. Because a lot of this, a lot of this music this worldly music, it plays a big part in your life without you even realizing. Because the music now is actually promoting drugs, alcohol, it's promoting violence. And being as a kid hearing that, you start to look into that more and more because you're influenced by these artists. You're seduced, right. really. You're seduced. And you just want to do what, you want to be like them. Yes. Okay, and you know, and that's no way to live your life. And you know, you, Growing up that way, that's that's what you were influenced yeah. by. And the devil works through these artists and gives them these thoughts yes. to put into their music. And it does influence people in a great way. And I'm so glad that the Lord took that away from <laughs> you. Now, your first service at Grace Cathedral, what was that like? When, when I first came to the doors, you could just feel God's presence. You know that it's real. It's a completely different experience from me coming to Grace Cathedral. And then, you know, from going to the church I previously went to, it's just God is more real at Grace Cathedral. Um, the music is very annoying. And the way the pastors preach is all truth. You know, it's not watered down gospel. And I love how the Lord let you feel his presence when yes. you came into his house to give you that confirmation yes. that this is where your home should be. Yes. 
because this is where I am. And so can you kind of share with us then what you did after you received salvation? Yeah, so um, I eventually went down to start seeking for the Holy Ghost. Um, the day I got the Holy Ghost was Good Friday. It was just a couple of days before Easter. And that was a wonderful experience. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a beautiful experience. Um, I remember being down at the altar and we have wonderful altar workers. Um, the three people that were down there with me, it was Shelly, Tom Neal, and Mike Kish. And they just, they help a lot. You know? and, and what they do when they help is they, they're just praising yes, God with just you. To just God encourage you to keep praising the yes. Lord while you're seeking for the yes. Holy Ghost. And, and what happened? So I was down there and trying to learn how to yield is, you know, it's a big part of receiving the Holy Ghost and just leaning more to trust in the Holy Ghost. So I was down there seeking and I was, you know, picturing myself walking on the waters with Jesus. And I hear Shelly, she goes, you're walking the waters with Jesus, you know, you're walking the waters with Jesus. And that's just the Holy, that was the Holy Ghost giving that re yes, the confidence and just reassurance like, hey, I'm here. I'm just waiting for you to let go. Right, because Shelly had no idea what <laughs> no, was going through your mind. Nope, and then I was picturing, <laughs> um, I was picturing myself at the, um, the foot of Jesus' cross. I was kneeled down, and then I hear Shelly off to the side, you're at the foot of his cross, you know, you would have been there. <laughs> so it was just him letting me know, you know, hey, I am here. I am, I'm a real person. I am here. You know, this is not, you do not doubt it. Because when we're seeking for the Holy Ghost, that's when the enemy will try to creep in and make us doubt. Right. Especially when you're, the closest you are, the more the enemy is going to try to, you know, fight you because he doesn't want you to receive the baptism yeah. of the Holy Ghost. So what happened? So you're yielding on over, the Holy Spirit comes on in? Yes, yep. He finally ended up coming on in and just the feeling, um, you just feel God's presence just all in your hands, your mouth. My body, I, like, I was just so warm inside and it's just love. Right. You know, you just, you just feel God's love and it's beautiful. And he spoke through you in a heavenly language. Yes, and that's yes. always amazing. <laughs> yes. You know, and so now your entire family, your wife, your yes. three kids are now part of Grace Cathedral. Yes. And what has that experience been like for you? It's amazing because um, just our children, they see what we do. Mm -hmm. And if they see us, you know, going deeper and deeper with the Lord, that's going to influence them to do it. And the re I'll give an example of that. So something that had happened with my car and I couldn't make it to service. So I was at home and it was at the end of the sermon and I was yielding over to the Holy Ghost. And I hear to the side of me as I'm yielding over, I hear um, my eight year old boy, I hear him just pouring out glory. He's like, <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Just, just trying to go through as he, hear, he hears me yielding over. Um, they watch us, you know. Mm -hmm. Did and, you encourage him to seek for the baptism or was... Uh, at that time, um, I didn't. I didn't tell him to do that. Okay. But, um, now he just he's, did it on his own. Yeah, he just did it on his own. But now he is still currently seeking for the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So, do you spend time with your children and um, do prayer time with them? So, um, with, with my uh, youngest one, Kaden, I'll go in his room at night. There's a um, there's a show because he's not really that good at reading. How so young is he? He's eight years old. Okay. Yeah. So I'll go in his room at night and we'll watch his show. And what that show is, it tells like all the Bible stories and it's oh, like showing lovely. like the images because I want him to have like that understanding because right. he won't be able to comprehend too well. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just read to him and him not really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I want him to have like that visualization and, you know, to be able to see it. And I love that because you didn't have that growing up no. and you're giving your children what you lacked growing yeah. up. And you're teaching them what they need to know about the Lord to give them that foundation. Yes. And I know you shared with us before the show um, about your, your youngest. Oh, yeah. Um, about him praying. Can yes. you just kind of briefly? So before we eat dinner, we pray every night before we eat dinner. Um, I'll pray over the table. And now it's to the point, um, we have a 16-month-old baby. <laughs> so now when he sees food or he's getting ready to eat, he'll go, he'll say pray. But he says it like pie. <laughs> you can't really say it. So he'll go pray and he'll go like this and put his hands like this to start praying for the food. And he makes sure he does that before he eats. Oh, that's precious. I love that. He's conditioned so to pray. Yes. yes, you're teaching him to pray at a very young age. Well, we have to take another break here, okay. but friend, we have more to come. So stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> My 
my sins are ever before me. When I go to bed, when I wake up, all day long, I can't escape all the evil that I've done. How can God forgive me if I can't even forgive myself? But then I found Jesus. I have a brand new life. I asked for mercy and he gave it. I asked him to wipe away all my transgressions and he heard me. He said he would remove my sins far away from me. He said he would drown my sins into the sea. Don't you want forgiveness for your sins? Come to Jesus today. Our Grace family is supported by viewers like you. Your donation is greatly appreciated. Your financial gift ensures that this faith-building program can continue to be a blessing to you and your family and to many others just like you. Welcome back. And Reno, we want to thank you for being on the show today. And I know your heart is really for the youth to come to Christ. What message would you like to leave with them today? One thing we have to understand with being young, we cannot take advantage of that because all it would have taken was just one bullet to hit me and I would have been in hell. We are not promised tomorrow at all. I just love how God changed your life, Reno. And friend, if you'd like Jesus Christ in your heart and let him change your life today, all you have to do is pray with me now. Say this prayer, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins but I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Now come and be with us in the services at Grace Cathedral this morning. We love you and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. We would love to hear from you. If you were encouraged or blessed by today's program, let us know. You can email us at ogf at thegracecathedral.org or write to us. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Ernest Angeli Ministries.